New documentary has given a rare insight into the Queen's final days, including how family members persuaded her to spend her final days at Balmoral. In the documentary, Charles III, The Coronation Year, Princess Anne reveals how her mother feared it would make things more difficult for the family if she died in her Scottish home, but convinced her to put her own comfort before concern for others. It is the first time that members of the royal family have spoken of arrangements for the late Queen's death. Joining me now to discuss this is the former royal editor at The Sun, Charlie Ray, and royal commentator Sarah Louise Robertson. Thank you both so much for joining us. Um, sure. Charlie, I'll come to you first. It does sound like um, there are a lot of really interesting interviews in this documentary, but one thing that yeah. um, jumps out at me is how much Princess Anne is being used uh, in this documentary and how very personal some of what she's saying is. Yes, it's it's quite amazing. I think this is going to be uh, the highlight of the Christmas television viewing, to be perfectly honest. Uh, this is going to be really interesting. You're absolutely right about the, Princess Anne's involvement. I mean, she's she seems to be taking the lead in, in all this and, make, and making it clear that her mother was very concerned about uh, passing away uh, at at Balmoral, but basically Princess Anne said, "Look, you know, you can't think about that. You you carry on with what you want to do. Everything's going to be fine. Others will sort it all out." And I, 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 that's not the sort of thing we have seen before since the '60s when the BBC did that, you know, um, fly on the wall documentary, which has never been seen ever again. But it's going to be really nice to see the background, uh, the, um, the things that happened in the background to the coronation. And Sarah Louise, also very poignant, the quotes that I've been reading today that Princess Anne talks about the moment that we, the public, weren't allowed to see when they lowered the Queen's uh, coffin um, at St George's Chapel and how Princess Anne found that the most upsetting and moving moment. As they took the crown off, she was saying that she felt like that was the moment in some ways that her mother could finally give up doing her duty um, and literally rest in peace. Yes, that's correct. But what was interesting is she, she said she felt a sense of relief when that happened and when the crown was passed, taken from the coffin to be passed obviously to her, to her brother because he was going to become king, King Charles. And she said there was a moment of relief, uh, relief there that her, her mother was now being allowed to rest, as you put it, and that, that her duty was over to the country, to, to the Commonwealth, and now it was carrying on with Charles inheriting the throne. And what Anne's trying to say to all of us is that monarchy doesn't stop. It's the 365 day of the year operation. There is no let-up whatsoever. It carries on regardless, and one monarch goes, and another monarch comes in to take over, and it has to be seamless, that transition. And I think Anne herself found that fascinating, in a way, to, to watch, but at the same time, she's grieving, grieving her mother. We're grieving the Queen, but she's grieving her mother, but she understands the traditions have to carry on and be maintained. And the Queen herself, the late Queen herself, was such a stickler for those traditions and those continu that continuity. And, and Charlie, of course, really to play. And Charlie, of course, in this documentary, um, we see a lot of the preparation behind the scenes preparations for the coronation. And I think people will be fascinated to see what it's like. And again, Anne talking about having to to walk the course and check where cables might go to, you know, tri television cables might trip you up and all the rest of it. But one of the bits I think people will be excited to see is a, a moment between. Charles and William, we all remember from the coronation that moment where William uh, kissed his father on the cheek, but we'll see some, some rehearsals for that where perhaps things uh, weren't going so smoothly. Yeah, no, we're going to be looking forward to that. We've got a situation where uh, at one point William is tr trying to tie a clasp around the heavy uh, ermine uh, coat that he, he was going to wear and he said this may not work on the day and Charles turns to his son and says well you, at least you don't have sausage fingers like me and it's actually quite right when you shake hands with uh, the, the, the Prince of Wales now the king um, you cannot but escape the fact that he has got podgy paws there's no <laughs> doubt about it 
Uh, and uh, the other thing I, I think as well is when you'll see Camilla after she's come in, I think it's from the balcony after they've been on the balcony, and she just she just lets out a huge, oh, oh God, thank God all that's over. I mean, this is fascinating stuff that we're going to see uh, about the behind the scenes. And we've also got the Archbishop of Canterbury forgetting his his words at one stage, and another vicar turning him to saying, um, you know, you usually you say this thing before, haven't you? And Charles breaking down in complete laughter, and it's quite all relaxed and, and everything else. I think it's going to be quite fascinating. Well, I find it very interesting that some of the papers are describing the Archbishop of Canterbury um, as the breakout star of the show, saying that um, that he is the one with the sort of best turn of phrase and sense of humour, as Charlie was just saying there, um, that actually he comes across as very humorous, which perhaps uh, a lot of people um, wouldn't be expecting. Um, let's just talk about what else the royals will be doing uh, this, this Christmas. Sarah Louise, do we have any um, indications yet of who's going to be with the royals, who we might see on Christmas Day? Yes, we do. Charles is already at Sandringham House. He held a soiree last night for one of Kate Middleton, his daughter-in-law's uh, private charities, which was lovely. We've got 40 guests coming to Sandringham House for, for, to, for the Christmas celebrations. They include this year, for the first time, Queen Camilla's family. And that includes Camilla's sister, Annabelle Elliott. She will be there. Um, it also includes um, Queen Camilla's two children. So we'll see Tom and her daughter, Laura, and then all of Queen Camilla's grandchildren as well. And we're also going to see, also invited on the list, is Charles's cousin, Lady Sarah Chateau, who was Princess Margaret's daughter. And Charles and Lady Sarah are very, very close. She's really sort of like another sister to Charles. Um, they enjoy painting together. They have lots in common. They normally take holidays together each year. And so Charles is, is, is keen to have her there. So that carries on the tradition. And the Queen herself was very, very fond of her niece, Lady Sarah Chateau. So that's lovely. And she'll be coming with her children. Um, one of her sons is classed as one of the most handsome handsome young men in Britain. Um, I think he's on, he always makes the Tatler eligible bachelor list. So, so he'll also be there. Um, and then we're going to see the rest of the family. So obviously we'll see the main role. So we'll have the Wessexes, Princess Anne, her children, um, Peter Phillips and, and Zara Tyndall with their respective other halves and then their children on top. So there's going to be lots of young people at the table this year. And what is very funny is King Charles apparently has banned any selfies being taken at the table by any of the teenagers or the young ones. He says no selfies. There will be some official photographs taken um, from, from the official role for photographer, but none of the kids whipping out their phones and taking some candid shots from around the, the Christmas lunchtime table. So we won't see anything, anything like that. Gosh, but it well, sounds like they're having uh, a full, fun, full day. If only the rest of us could ban teenagers from being on their phone at mealtimes, I think Christmas would be a lot less stressful. Um, Charlie, of course, Sarah Louise, I don't know um, if by um, accident or deliberately didn't mention some of the more controversial members yes. uh, of the royal family. <laughs> um, let's just, Charlie, let, let's talk about Andrew a bit. Obviously, yet again, he's been in the headlines. Are we expecting to see him with the royals? Will we see him out and about with Charles? Because, of course, Charles has had um, a lot of criticism for not banishing Andrew further? Well, uh, Andrew and uh, Sarah Ferguson, his uh, ex-wife and their two daughters will be at the, uh, at the Christmas celebrations. I would be staggered if we see Andrew at all doing the walkabout, uh, which happens after on Christmas Day, which happens after the, the church service at St Mary Magdalene. Um, He's going to be very much in the background and the very fact that we've now got a situation where he's again going to be named in a list, allegedly named in a list of uh, Epstein friends. And we don't know uh, in what context that list will be uh, revealed, uh, but it, it won't be pleasant. That's 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 for sure. I, I can't believe that he's going to be welcomed um, uh, at, at all on any public uh, situation. They cannot take the risk that he ends up getting booed by some of the crowd or people turn their backs on him. So he will be scuttling back uh, to the main house.